I have really poor skin. I didn't want it. I didn't want my face to be in high definition. Yeah. Scare all the longtime viewers. Oh yeah, you know, then we got some they're here for our good looks. Not for our random video game conversation. Speaking of random video game conversation, let's start the show. This is the top video game podcast from HorribleNight.com for Tuesday, March 4th, 2014. Come at you live on Twitch TV slash Horrible Night. I'm your host, Justin Lacey. Jordan Wilson is impressed by how much how fast I can rattle that off. Standing in for Justin Gifford tonight will be Jordan Wilson. That's that's very meta. Blah, I'm having a kid soon. Uh, I read books. <laughs> Environment. Environmental law. That is a spot on, uh, spot on impression. Something about puppies or dogs. I don't know. I don't know. Um, tell me about anime because I don't know about anime. Uh, Ooh, there's... anime. Okay, I need to preface it this with a couple of things first. All right. Um, for anybody who's not familiar with anime, um, that'd be me. Yeah. Okay. Or probably most of most of the most of the viewers or people in chat, except for my brother. So. <laughs> There are three things you need to watch out for when, when watching anime. Okay, the first thing it's uh, it's referred to as pantsu. All right, so some anime Pant- pantsuits. <laughs> so Hillary, Cl- pantsu. Hillary Clinton is an anime. So so some anime likes really likes uh, to to show off panties. All right, oh, for some man. reason, for, yeah, for some reason these animes are, are kind of marked by really short skirts and it's really windy quirky, days. Right, is really it? really really windy days. I don't know what it is. That's just. <laughs> You get those, and everybody's falling down a lot. Everybody. You think that would happen in Chicago? Really, a lot. Really more bad. Than... Really bad balance. All right, so that's one thing you got to watch out for. Oh. All right, the second thing you got to watch out for is not only that funny, but seriously, you have to watch out for it. And so, some anime, for some reason, thinks that molestation and rape should is somehow vital to the plot. So you got to watch out for that. And then the third thing you got to watch out for is just gore. I'm okay. <laughs> and I mean, gore. like, no, I, I don't mean just like watching someone Violence. get killed. Watching. Watching someone's entrails get slowly pulled out mm-hmm. of their bodies. So, all right. So, I'm going to preface it with that. So Do the entrails ever turn into tentacles? <laughs> that I've, is a, I've heard that's another that, thing to watch out for. And also, I think all anime should have this sort of categorization system on the back of their box. I don't need a rating system, but just like level it of... It does. Level of it pants, does. suits. Uh, so, lo- most, of the, most of the adult stuff... How, no, I, mean, I, don't, I don't mean a porn. I mean like the... like. Uh, I don't know what you'd. Right. I don't know what you'd like. S- more serious Adult topics. Adult situations. Yeah, those are the ones that those are the ones that get a little uncomfortable. So but we got our, most so of them have most of them have the fan service. So like we have the pantsuit scale. We have the Pant- rapey scale. <laughs> pantsuit. I wish they would put and some the pants on. Scale. Then we wouldn't have that problem. So, so the anime I'm going to talk about it's uh, it just uh, it real popular at the end of last year, and so my uh, brother started watching it. So I didn't really have many plans on watching it. Because I knew it fell more into the gory side of it. I'm, okay. I'm not not a real big not a real big fan of gore. But, but he started suits. watching it. But pants, yeah. <laughs> um, if I keep saying it's gonna so be funnier. I, so I started watching it with him. Um, is anime by the title of Shingeki no Kyojin? Uh-huh. Or Zhu, yeah. Or Shur- <laughs> okay. All right. Well, then I don't need to say. It. No, as you may know, it Attack on Titan. Pretty I, popular. It's all. Pretty it's popular. really yeah. popular on Tumblr. I can tell yeah, you and for some, for some reason, really popular in uh, Japanese key, like car commercials too. Okay. Like, have you seen Have you seen those like the live action no, had, car commercials? I buy right, American, or I don't buy we- cars. Also, <laughs> <laughs> where do you Where do you see Japanese car commercials? Like are we, are like on some- video game video game websites because oh. everybody's excited about Attack talk, on Titan. I need to talk to our advertisers. We're apparently missing our demographic. Oh, the commercials are gross. So, <laughs> have you ever seen a picture of any of the Titans on the show? Know. I've seen. Right. I keep seeing this like really tall, bald dude. Okay, well, picture a person without skin. Yes, and that's what it, that's what that's what the main Titan in the thing yeah, looks like. Yeah, I've seen like. him on like all kinds yeah. of geek T-shirts that have been like replacing my favorite shows. Or... All right, so right, yeah. So it's pretty gross. So, um, so here's how I would describe. Uh, Attack on Titan. I wrote this down because because uh, I had to get the wording just right. Let's read. Okay. It is a po- post-apocalyptic medieval steampunk world where a military <laughs> unit. Okay, uh-huh. I'm not done. All right, where a military unit of soldiers fight against 15 meter tall zombies. Meter. Like, what are meters? About five stories. Okay. 
you know how big a building is, yes. right? Yes, yes. Okay, picture a building about five stories tall. That's about 15 meters. All right. And this military unit fights these zombies like Spider-Man, but with swords. Okay. Yeah. So I, I think I can understand why it's it's pretty popular. So just picture like um, like an entire military squad just like jumping around buildings like Spider-Man, mm-hmm, but with mm-hmm. swords. Okay. I play that. Uh, Fighting, fighting zombies in a po- post-apocalyptic okay. world. All right, all right. In a post-apocalyptic world with 15-foot uh, zombies that eat people and can't oh, die. Oh, so the titans are zombies. Or the big... Uh, yeah. Ish. Zombies-ish. Zombie-ish. It is... At no point do they explain what the zombies are or what the titans are, where the titans come from, but I'm going to refer to them as zombies because they can't die mm-hmm. um, at all. Well, they can die, so but it's like... mortal. Yeah, yeah. They don't need to eat... Like they just are, and uh, they um, they're completely peaceful. But we're trying to kill them no, anyway. <laughs> no, they don't kill. They don't kill anything but people. Oh, that's and the that's second funny. they see people or sense people near them, they freak out and just go running towards the people because. Um, and this is where the gore gets into it. Um, they have like an in, insatiable hunger for eating people. <laughs> yeah, I get that's that's about the best way that I I can like describe bacon. it. So, got it. <laughs> They like lo- long pig. Long bacon. Long bacon. Oh, man. So, <laughs> And so this is another problem with uh, – okay, so I think maybe um, the first season of um, Game of Thrones kind of uh, taught us to uh, – that anybody could die at any point. Nobody, nobody is a main character enough that they're going to survive. Well, so this – this show, they introduce you to like a group of like high school kids mm-hmm. that uh, you know, and everybody's all has their own torrid past, a lot of emotional they stuff going on. <laughs> that's a video game joke. Yeah, is that yeah, that's appropriate a, for this show? That's a good anime too. <laughs> I like Persona. The video game is pretty fun too. Um, but yeah, yeah, most of those got most of those main characters die. Most of them, you watch them get eaten. <laughs> So it's, man, it's rough. That's why I mean, like, I don't know why it's as popular as it is. Because uh, outside of the is whole, it new? like, Do you know, not nah, well, yeah. So that the anime just came out. Okay. Like, um, it ended in September of last year. Okay. So LCZ, other than, like, as as a dumb person, like a dumb <laughs> anime person. No, it's not. I always okay. assume animes are just like one two or out two hour movie. I forget. Like, no, they're just. Oh, okay. They're yeah. like a TV no, show. Like, yeah, it goes on for a while. <clears throat> Yeah, it's a lot of, it's a lot of TV shows over there. <laughs> most of the movies, most of the movies are a uh, like a quick like clip sh- clip show of a of a series. Mm-hmm. Like they'll they'll do a series in two, and then they'll do a movie that's just like a clip episode. Do you think <laughs> like two hours of clips from the season? Do you think this is particularly friendly for someone that's not into anime? Like as far as a. I don't. I don't know. It, it was. It's. It's gory. And so here's the other problem. Here's the other problem too. So like I said, um, you just kind of have to accept the fact that um, at any point during the show, like any of these characters could die. Like okay. nobody's safe. And um, I. So the show got real popular. Um, it's based on a manga. So there's a guy. There's there's a person that's writing all of this and doing hey, and doing the hey, work for it. What's the difference between anime and manga? <laughs> a manga is a graphic novel. Okay. Okay, and then an anime. So graphic is, is a gra- and it's, it's a graphic novel. It. It's a graphic novel in color, but without the text and 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 like a flip show. They move it real quick. Okay, graphic like, novel. Like like video animation. Okay. Okay, gotcha. So that's the difference. <laughs> um, well, so the uh, um, the the manga is not finished. So you have, you know the. Anime, yeah, they kind of started making the anime like it is like um, Game of Thrones. The show's gonna laugh the yeah. books oh, too. So oh, most anime is this way. Most anime, you'll watch a season, mm. and then you realize that's it. And this show came out in 2011, <laughs> and then you're like, all right, well, I guess I'll I'll hunt down the manga, and then you find okay, so yeah, there's a manga, and it's not done, and it's been going on for six years, and where the manga is at is where the TV show ended because they only they only release like one chapter a month or something like that. So, where the manga is right now would be season two of the show, okay. and um, so I caught myself up on the manga because the the anime doesn't end. They kind of wrap one outstanding thing up, and then that's it. And then the sh- then the show's over. And then 
there's no news about you know there being a season two of the anime or anything. So I'm like, yeah. well, I'm like, oh crap! Now I can, and now I gotta get online and find the uh, That's find the manga. That's why I say don't watch anything because you might like it and it'll be over. <laughs> no, the well, see the yeah. So the, I mean, there's enough TV shows that uh, that end mm-hmm. that end horribly. <laughs> That that really doesn't work either. So <laughs> I think you just kind of have to go into it knowing that, like, this might be crap. It might never end, so I might never find out what go you know what's going on in this world. But yeah, I'm enjoying it now. So cool. So it's it's enjoyable. Um, I wouldn't really, I wouldn't recommend Is it. Is it if you worth can't really posting handle, about handle on a, on a website every day? Because I see a lot of people doing that. <sighs> people, they man, there are fans out there. Yeah, they're. Right. <laughs> And there are people that doing their own fan art. I mean, deviant art. You know, you got to put something up on your deviant art. Page. <laughs> All right, my, you got to. Deviant art page has been a little. It's been a little uh, dormant, I guess you would. Say. Yeah, I liked all your Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, fan, <laughs> the running guys? fan stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah I like oh. your little. Uh, I like the character. Oh, that you, you made found that with the spiky hair. You found yeah. the story, so that, that looked exactly like Sonic the Hedgehog, but was red. <laughs> but I mean, you put your own artistic. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, I like your your spin on the character. I mean, ninety percent of the artwork, you know, wasn't my property, but I think that that you know the the filter I put on them made it my. Um, own. It, it's all common fair use, right? Yeah. Common. <laughs> the the game's old enough; it's all fair use. Yeah, yeah, you can use all the art assets. Don't worry about it. All the music too from the game. Yeah. Uh, before we get to the the new copyright free. <laughs> yeah, Tr- fact. <laughs> yes, truth. I only post Fact. truths. Every video game that's more than five years old, all the all the all the assets are free free to use. I'm so I'm learning so much. Um, manga are well, I don't even remember. They're not graphic novels, and anime is cartoons. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Um, so yeah, I, was, I had something. Else, I, had, I had some point that I would. I had something else that I was going to there, but I, I kind of. I just summed it. it up for everybody, so it's for fine. a minute. Um, okay. So. We've been, I think we've both been working on our own game ideas in the background here. Like, we do a lot of game pitches on the horrible show, and um, uh, we've been we've been looking to have you on the show, and you're kind of, you're telling me a little bit that, you know, some of your game pitch ideas, you might actually want to make them, so throwing them out on the show is a little weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I really struggle, because, like, I'm actually trying, I'm actually learning game uh, game mechanics right now, like, trying to learn different game engines, and so, when I have an idea... It's usually a real game idea, and sometimes they're good. Like, and I, you know, want to keep them close, you know, close to my chest, yeah. so that some, some indie developer, all the indie devs that watch this show, or or just members of all, horrible night all, might steal from you. I guess that's true too. Hey, you actually work. In our defense, you actually work with a bunch of game developers. I say, in our defense, we've posted some of your stuff before, so mm-hmm, that's we're true. trustworthy dudes. But I was gonna say, so like, I do, I do have a. Uh, Kind of a, a serious game game pitch based on that that game I made for this sh- this site a long time ago. Yeah. So all that, right. Is that still is that still in the works? Is that still? I mean, it's got <laughs> no, a game no. design doc. So. No, that was that was a. It's dead. Oh, you're no. I don't mean I don't mean the uh, hor- I don't mean the horrible night game. Oh. So that the other game the the flower picking one. Oh yeah, the uh. Side the other one I made like like yeah like three I showed years that ago. to somebody, like a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, to show awesome. some mechan- Yeah, well, I was showing somebody the. Uh, we've been talking about having uh, stuff going on in the background, and 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 I showed them your your robot fighting the dragon. So I thought that was cool. Um, but anyway, all, yeah. all I was gonna say was at at my day job, we actually got to make some like for real game pitches. So wait a minute, you don't do this? You don't do horrible night full time? Oh yeah, I mean, I make all the money from Horrible Night, so I can have, <laughs> yeah. so I can well, have a day make, job. That's how this you don't works. make boatloads of money from yeah. your video game streams. Yeah, That's especially because you let me in on some of those anime uh, advertisements that I can start tapping into. It's gonna <laughs> double our revenue. I, I I gave a clear warning up front. <laughs> okay, there is there is there is a lot of stuff to be avoided out there. So <laughs> all right, just just put that out there, man. It, that, it takes a while to find good anime. That warning goes before all of our videos. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, w- I was having this moment. We were having a brainstorming session uh, with our with our team, and we we rattled off like twelve or four, twelve or fourteen game ideas in about an hour. And uh, but somewhere in the middle of that, I was I kind of had this surreal moment of 
how many dumb game pitches we've made on podcasts in the last <laughs> year. <laughs> yeah. And then like but they're not they're not dumb, man. Every one of them. Oh, they're great. Really, uh, yeah. I mean they're all yeah, they're, yeah. they're gonna change the industry. But the actually waffle, the waffle space truck thing. <laughs> man, that is gonna move Nintendo's here. Their next their <laughs> yeah, next somebody's got platform. To. Yeah. Trust me. We should, I should send all those videos to Nintendo. But it was just weird <laughs> to have a conversation where I I had to stop myself from spinning it into like the ridiculous area where our podcast game pitches go. And <laughs> oh yeah, we actually have to figure out how to make this. Like so, like oh, this is actually something yeah that someone has to do artwork for, and yeah. then someone has to program, and then we have to put in front of people. Yeah, it's like I you know yeah we might be able to do that alternate reality of. Uh, Google Glass game where you interview pro wrestlers all day when they're <laughs> really your friends, but I don't... If I actually pitch that at work, I don't know if we'd get the licensing for that. There, there are game elements in that. You could <laughs> you could make it a game. There could be some type top score or something. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'm, ex- I'm excited to see that. Um, we'll actually talk about that in... I think that game's going to come out in April, so... And then after that game's done, I can tell I can put pressure for you to release your game because I saw it today. I pl- I played it I played it on a phone. It was weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was that was pretty fun. And now I'm now I'm learning the headache of because I I have a kind of an older iPhone, and so I'll do something and it won't really work. And then I'll go and get one of my coworkers like brand new iPhones, and it'll run you know perfectly smooth and fine. And then it's one of those it's one of those moments like uh like I. I don't know if this technology just works on older platforms and if I should just ignore it. <laughs> like if it runs, but like th- it's my phone. I want to be able to play the game on my phone. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, so I'll be like, all right, I'll, I'll mess around with it. It was really nice minute. to develop See apps I- and games for smartphones five years ago when it was a little simpler. Uh, yeah. Now it's, yeah. yeah. Now you don't yeah. even know. You can't, can't even trust those old iPhones. It's uh, well, everyone, yeah, and everyone in the office here at work has an iPhone too. So, so in <laughs> like short. I'm going to keep writing about video games and making dumb movies about me of uh, dumb videos of me playing them rather than attempt to make one because it's too hard. So that was the moral of my story. Yeah, ideas for video games are easy to come by. So the thing I'm working on, I'm just trying to learn how to do uh, HTML5 JavaScript games. And so I wouldn't really say the game is much fun. <laughs> so, I, you know, it's so I asked one of my, well, I had one of my coworkers, I said, because he's he's uh, he's been real like excited to work on all the music for the games. Oh, cool! And so I asked him. I kind of I showed him um, like my latest build, and I was like, "So, I mean, do you have any ideas like how to make it you know a little bit funner, like a little more interesting?" And he just it's started dubstep. Ro- <laughs> yeah, that sounds. He, he said more panties. Is what he said. He said more, <laughs> pan- more pants. Pants. Suits. More pants suits is what the game needs, which it does totally. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's better with more pantsuits. Um, but yeah, I just started rolling, and I said, whoa, 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 everything you just said, I have to create art assets for and then animate. So, And then my boss did it too when I showed him the game because <laughs> uh, the game takes place in front of our building. And so he's like, oh, wouldn't it be awesome if you could like walk into the office and walk around? And I'm like, let me stop you right there. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what you just, like, so. If you can give me all the art for that. Yeah, I just designed the front of the building. What you're talking about is going through, yeah, every room in the building and then, like, yeah, this, in designing it this out, This 2D man. platformer it, it, is awesome. If you turn the corner, can it become a first-person shooter? <laughs> well, well, you remember the, that first game pitch that we, we had? That the first factory week we did. Oh yeah, the, yeah. Uh, we were the, you're you're an intern and you're gonna go up to all the small box employees and <laughs> and and then it, like there was this moment where I was like, huh, wait, I have to make I have to make pixel art of everyone every that works <laughs> of everyone Stop that hiring works. people. And then like you know you're running around Broad Ripple, you're, you're fired all the different because your avatar and, is too hard to make. Or your avatar looks too much like this yeah, other you, person's you two avatar. Look, actually, you both have short hair, beards, and glasses. No, no. One of you is out. Everyone, One of you needs to grow your hair real long. Everyone at your company kind of <laughs> looks the same. It's like, well, we did that so it would be easier to make cultural video games. <laughs> let's see. Let's art pixel, pixel art assets, yeah. I don't know what we're talking about, so um, tell me <laughs> about why you hate permadeath. All right, so I recently started playing roguelike. A and uh, a not a rogue like the you no, play rogue rogue, rogue <laughs> legacy. I had to look oh. over my I had to look over my notes. Like wait, wait. Technically, like, rogue like I thought. Rogue-like. Wait, 
you're being real weird. And then I realized, oh, it's because I said I, it wrong. I can read okay, I mind. played the rogue like Rogue Legacy. All right. Technically, well, I, Rogue Legacy is billed as a rogue like like. So I <laughs> just keep that in mind before you. A rogue like light. L- L- it's a light roguelike. It's a. Li- I thought it was a like it's like. A like. Like. Like like. Like a like a rogue like. Yeah. All right. So you played one of those that is similar to those. Okay. All right. So about probably about half hour a half hour into the game on my fifth generation, man, I uh, I just did not want to lose him. <laughs> I just really emotionally I, I, attached I just, to him. No, I just got so sick of starting starting oh. starting a new run. And then like four or five screens into it, just dying. Just I'm dead. I got I got hit. Okay. I got hit by one guy and I'm dead. How many and, hours uh, of that game did we stream for you? Like that well, that uh, is the game. <laughs> was it Aaron? I, yeah, Aaron was streaming. I think Aaron, that, right? Jason, and I all streamed it. On, and I only Ethan. watched. I watched. A, I just watched a couple of Aaron's. Maybe he doesn't. Um, does he not die? Is he really good? He's not. I think. I think I only watch. Wait, what's your point? Where are you going with that? <laughs> I'm just saying. How did you, did you not know that you're going to die a lot in this game? Oh no, I knew it. Okay. I just didn't know how much like I you hated. Hate that. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I I get I get how the game works. I totally get the 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 uh, game mechanic that mm-hmm. they're going for. But like I said, after about my fifth run, I'm like, man. I've, so I've spent a half hour, and uh, I feel like I'm wasting my time. But you got some gold to show for it. I know. And get some sweet only, upgrades. Yeah, you've only got like 250 gold. So and then he takes it all away. So yeah, so you don't have you have enough gold to buy like one or two power ups and then you don't. And but so I, I knew going <laughs> into it how the game worked, all right. So well Yes, Trucker right, Balls being, like don't starve, fuck don't starve. Being a uh, being a, a being a programmer, all right, mm-hmm. being a, a I, I am familiar with the concept of, that a, a video games just software. It's just a you know, co- it's files on your computer that it's are running executable, and any uh, any software running on your computer needs to store files locally mm-hmm. so that it, it 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 that's how it, that's how it saves so that it can it restore it. So I found where the game was saving <laughs> the save files. So I'm really angry at you. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, you broke the game. How, how many game generations? Genie? How many gener? Yeah. Oh, I see. I didn't cheat. It's. I, I would say I exploited. I so I exploited. <laughs> I exploited a game. Just. I exploited a a truth of about software about a, a, a thing running on your computer. So what how edit, long did what it, edit did you make? So all I did was I found where the folder was and uh-huh. I would just I would copy and paste the folder, okay. and then if I died, you just shut the game off. Restore that folder, and then you're right back to where, right back to where you're. So I was basically save stating. <laughs> yeah, like if you're, yeah. you know, like a raw, yeah. like an emulator. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's I, a lot of work. You know, I, I would start a run. Were you playing it windowed? My, Were you so playing? In my, no. in my opinion, it's less work than if you just play the game. <laughs> all right. So, and here's why. Okay. So, how many generations did you? Um, did you get into before you beat the, uh, beat the first boss? Just ballpark it. Oh God. Yeah. Okay. 20, yeah, you don't 25 even Twenty-five plus. Like yeah. Twenty-five plus. All right. It's not. That's not as high. Like I actually thought to look up the it average. Could be, it, probably, um, it could be higher. It's been a while. <laughs> I haven't looked at chat. Are they? Are they? They're upset. They, they're ear cheap. Are they getting the pitchforks and and, tor- and torches out? Hashtag and everything. So I beat the first boss at uh, my fifth generation. <laughs> I'm it, not impressed. Yeah. Copy and paste, man. And then I just beat the second boss at my 11th generation, I think. <laughs> and I'm on level 50. So, <laughs> like my characters are on level 50. So, is so it, when I'm, is it because when you... I'm in a dungeon run, I clean out the dungeon in one in one generation. <laughs> And then when the there's nothing stage, left, to, stage, then stage, when stage. there's absolutely nothing left to do, then I let that character die. Okay, so yeah. you know you know about the you know about the ability to use the architect, right? That'll save the castle. Yeah. Okay. And th- and that's not your frustration. Your frustration is you've got a, a character build that you want to run with. Or... Not really. It's not even. Well, you know that that was that was part of it because um, I found I really like the midget. The sh- the small guy, he's weaker, but um, it's so easy to dodge attacks. Like, he's actually the guy that I beat the first boss on, and I was just kind of like, 
it was, you know, my fifth generation. Like, I've been doing the save state stuff, but I'm not even really that high of a level yet. And I thought, all right, I've, I've cleared out the level. I'm going to go ahead and fight the uh, first boss to see if I can do it. And the guy was small enough, and I had, by then I had, um, like, triple jump. I had enough ruins that I could jump three times. Mm -hmm. I never got hit once during that fight. It took forever. Because uh, I wasn't doing much I'm damage just to, to the figure thing. Out if you put in more, less, or the same amount of work as just, just I know le less. Believe okay, me, so I, wait, am, wait, so wait, I am. I am so close to beating the game, and I've only played the game for probably three or four hours, maybe. But uh, okay, so you're you're on your run. The end is near. Like so, you you. Okay, wait. Before you start the game, you make a copy of the folder. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Then you do a run and you die. You yeah. cancel out of the game. You close the game. Yeah. You paste your cop your the original. I un old I I delete I delete the current okay. save file because that is a bad one. Uh huh. Because that has a dead a dead that has the corpse of a fallen member of my family in right. it. So I, I delete mean, that one and then I just restore the backed up one. Okay. And then I open the game back up. To what advantage, like? So it's the character build you like, or it's the fact that you know how to run the castle? I just, okay, I, don't, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is exactly, but I feel like every time I get hit, I shouldn't have got hit. <laughs> I shouldn't have just lost health. And I don't have any way to get that it health seems... back. It's so hard to get health back. That's not, that's not fair. That's what I say every time. <laughs> and so, so I quit the game, and I restore my save file, and I get back in there. I think you're and putting now, more work into it. <laughs> I'm not. I've, I've thought about it. I The first couple of times I did it, I thought, I'm having to quit the game. I'm having to yeah. But I've done it enough that um, I'm actually, because I kind of keep, um, it's kind of like you're replaying the same area over sure. and over and over again, yeah. like you would if you had the architect. But since, you're, since I'm using the exact same build, like it's the exact same character with the exact same size or like weird um, deficiencies, I guess, and the same like magic attack, like I get real good at using that character. And then at some point, yeah, I mean, I just have to admit there's nothing left, so he has to die and I have to get a new one. <laughs> look, so, I know I'm not. Look, I know I'm not playing the game right, okay? And I, and I, I am probably missing out on, on on a shared experience <laughs> with I, I don't know. with other people on this game. But man, I I kind of wish, like, the game plays so well that I kind of wish that they would just take it and then just get rid of the permadeath thing and then just do a um, like symphony of the night thing and just make the castle like, you know, your, your net, you know, your next like step three, three or four times as big. Cause man, that game, like the, t con the controls are real tight, mm -hmm. real tight. And uh, man, the animations, all, everything is real smooth. They've got a, Music's a, a awesome. ton, a ton of enemies. Yep. So yeah. Like a ton of attacks, yeah, yeah. And so the this, music is great this rabbit hole too. ends with you becoming one of those game developers that just hacks the games you really like to turn it into the game you really want it to be. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm just gonna remake the game. I'm gonna yeah. take all the art assets and turn it into the game that it you're should. Just gonna really, hey man, you're hey gonna, man, I'm just playing the game that that I need to to mm -hmm. enjoy it. This you're game is ten, ten out of ten. Okay, but there, there would be only people. ten out of ten if you save state it. There would be people that would buy your Rogue Legacy if you just removed the permadeath. If you just had lives mm -hmm. and got to like continue from yeah. within, yeah, they would, yeah. Well, it. But yeah, so, that is just a Castlevania game. So. so I struggle with this, even like making games, because like the couple of games that I've I've worked on, um, I don't want to waste anyone's time. <laughs> so I made this game for work one time that uh, the Return of the Jackal thing. So I just redid it recently with new art assets because we just stole art assets the first time around. Oh, we painted um, the room. The so I, uh, I had my nephew, who's 10, play the game, and he could not... There's only two rooms in the game, mm -hmm. and he could not figure out the, how to get... The game only takes a minute to beat. He could not figure out how to... He could not find the second room. He could not... It was just a platform. You just jump up into the air under a platform and then jump up into the air again. And I watched him for five minutes trying to find that platform. And then I got an email from one of my coworkers, and they had the exact same problem with, oh, like, I'm confused. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. And I went and watched her play it. And I was like, dang it. So, you know, I redesigned the level because clearly <laughs> nobody nobody can see that platform right there. Nobody knows to jump up on that. So uh, You're a bad okay, game developer. That's good feedback. All right. Yeah, it, it's just the the layout of the the level 
it, it doesn't make that clear. All right, that's fine. Because my even my nephew said he didn't realize it was a platform. He thought it was a brick in the wall. Mm-hmm. All right. So what I ended up doing, so I, I did that. But then um, there's like this laser, uh, these laser beams that are moving. And so it's just kind of a, uh, I don't know, you'd call it like a timing puzzle. Sure. You just got to get it's in the fun. right position. Yeah. Walk along. So cause as soon as you hit a laser beam, Game over. You, you get hit. So you can't be impatient. You got to just take your time with it. Man, nobody in my office could do it. <laughs> It's not that, and it's you not that it for them, man. You designed it for the real hardcore gamers out there. Well, I realized that may have and been what happened. Cousin. <laughs> no, he could. No, he couldn't do it either. Oh. Of course, he and he plays Call of Duty. Well, he's he plays it on. He's he plays I mean, it on I've seen, Wii, He's so it's bad. Not, I don't know who. Yeah, he, it's not know. a not the same. <laughs> you leave him alone, Lacey. Um, pick, pick off family. So members. what I. So what I ended up doing was so this is just like a an interesting showcase piece for the for my company. It, you know, we're not going to start making games or anything like that. It's just kind of a cool like we do these little we do these week sabbatical things and so it was just a game I made during it. Um but you know, we're going to write a blog about it and we're going to show it and people that How does this hack Rogue Legacy? Where is this going? Oh, so people in the game in 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 my industry in, in uh-huh. web development and the tech community are going to see this because oh they wrote a blog about it and try and play it except none of these people oh. play video games. So I added a I added three modes. I added <laughs> um, I added there's the hard mode mm-hmm. which is and again which there's only normal. two. Let's admit it. There's, a, there's only there's only two rooms in the game. Mm-hmm. Hard mode is if at any point you get hit by a laser beam and there's these security like robots. If you get uh, if one of those spot you then it's game over and you have to start all over again. Mm-hmm. All right, so normal mode, if you get hit by the laser beam, or the, then you start over again in the room you're in. Mm-hmm. So if you make it to the second room and you can't get by it past laser beams, you don't have to start the game over. You just got to start the laser beam thing over again. And then there's easy mode, which is nothing can harm, nothing, you <laughs> basically invisibility mode. It's God mode. Like the character is actually a little transparent because you can just walk through everything. Oh, that's, that's fun. So you can just, so the dog, the robot dog things can't, they don't see you, and then you can just walk through the laser beams. Well, considering your audience, you might want to call that normal mode so they feel better about themselves. Yeah, you have no, you have normal, not, hard, and nightmare mode is what you have. You don't have nightmare there's mode. There's no easy yeah. mode. Well, I thought about evil mode. Normal mode would be yeah, the you're invincible. So yeah, so I just sometimes games are too hard. You know, mm-hmm. I'm telling you, this, and, is, uh, this is where you're headed. You games you get, like you get transfixed on a game, you're gonna just. You were, as soon as you know how to get in there and manipulate the code for that game, you should call. Uh, Chat just said I should call that Justin mode. <laughs> Aww. And then, then you could actually beat some games. You know, you could just experience the ending like the rest of us are capable. That's why of I'm. Doing. Po- that's why I'm starting to post my game through videos just to prove to all of you <laughs> that I can beat games. You know, well, like uh, I don't know. None of us among see, us. None of us can see your hands though. There could be somebody else in the room <laughs> holding the controller. That we have to, yeah. Look, <laughs> what kind of racket would that be? I, I want to see. Got, I want to see the got, internet. You've got, Coop, the, you've got Coop in the room with you. The internet the game. nerd rage of some of finding out that your favorite let's player isn't <laughs> actually playing. He's just doing color commentary on top of something he else. Playing. He doesn't even own the console. It's a. It's his nephew. He just. Yeah. You know, he just. <laughs> not video your, feeds. Not your nephew. Yeah. He's terrible. Not my nephew. Games. He's a ma- oh, man. <laughs> Except for Call of Duty. Oh, man. So indie like game that. development. From my nephew. Um, let's see if we can trick you into talking about news. This kind of bugged me this week. Um, okay. Indie game development. So back at E3, um, Sony did this big outreach to indie developers, and they were kind of the winner. One of the reasons they kind of won E3 or whatever was because. They are bringing a bunch of indie games to their platform and being super friendly with them. And Microsoft kind of tripped over themselves, but uh, by getting rid of their Xbox Live indie games on the three because they 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 hate indie games. Uh, yes, at the time, yes, for two right. years okay. they thought I they, couldn't, I couldn't remember. They Fact, it was cool to hate indie. The last games. E3, mm-hmm. Microsoft hated indie yes. gamers. Now they love them. Fact. They love them because they started this ID indie developers at 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 Xbox program. Um, <laughs> Say that again. ID at Xbox. In, at, at now at, at the like at spelled symbol, out like the okay. You mean like an email address? Yes. Like yes. ID at Xbox. Like you're but don't send try to email, email that. I don't think that goes but not, anywhere. Not at Xbox.com. No, just, just at Xbox. Yeah. Like an email address, but not. If you can, <laughs> when you sent that to me, I was so confused what it was. <laughs> I thought I I seriously thought I'm looking at the uh, the doc for this. I 
I just assumed you mistyped something. No, that no. It was, that's that the name reason, of you the program. It, why? Why, so, is, why is there an at symbol in it? So they only, Why is it all capital letters, too? It's, 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 <sighs> it's, it's hip. It's That's the, my problem with it. That's where I can't get past. If there was a way to change the save files so that it read differently... Just solution then, everything. Then it would be 10 out of 10, but until I can change it, I, I'm going to struggle. So the ID at Xbox program uh, <laughs> proves that Xbox, that Microsoft loves indie game developers, but only the ones they invite to this program. <laughs> okay, yeah. So yeah. They're tr- what they're trying it's, to do is... They're it's, not every, it's not all indie developers. It's no, it's, the it's, hand, it's the handful that they've allowed. Yeah. The one, because they're trying to get away from the fact that Xbox Live Indie Games for the longest time was just Minecraft cl- clones and like baby, baby maker sims and just a, bu- a bunch of shitty indie games. But people, need their, people need their Flappy Bird. <laughs> flappy Bird. Yeah, taken off the, got taken off that, the, the app store. Yeah, Somebody people needs, need their fix, man. That's, that's what you should make. You should make a Flappy Bird. You need people now. making making those clones. <laughs> Everything. You need those Minecraft clones, man. They're starting <laughs> to show up on Steam. Actually. Sometimes you can't you can't get enough. Yeah, well, yeah. You put what is it, the voxel, the cube mm-hmm. on it, and it, yeah, there you go, Minecraft. So last week they they announced that they've. I think it was like they announced another 60 plus indie game developers that are in this program. And like, just, you know, they made it like a press release, like, hey, we're working with these guys now. They get to make games for us. We're, you know, it was like this outreach and like supposed to be like propping up these developers, but there's just something still really snooty about it. Just like this, this exclusive club that I just like, I, I don't think you understand what is making indie game development so fascinating. Like, it's, it's, the like cu- the you mean like the random weird yeah, yeah just like it's just stuff that just pops up nobody their desire to cure like curate all this stuff is is yeah. is still like putting up this wall uh, so that is what's going on this isn't like an open no like any it, indie developer can make games for Xbox Live and for right. or for the new Xbox One they cannot until Microsoft approves them basically and they pay or whatever to get into this program well well the, I mean everybody does the approval thing though. I mean, I mean, the App Store does, but obviously, right? I mean, in <laughs> Steam, a lot, of, a lot of crap gets through there. But and Steam's trying to figure out, you know, with Greenlight, trying to yeah, figure out how to yeah. how to make that work. But but you can still I, release yeah, you true, can still yeah. release a game for the PC and anybody can go buy it. Like that's yeah, that's true. And then because um, even even Steam, I mean, it's being voted. It's not just one guy at that works at Steam that's just you know, oh, I've got 50 <laughs> games. I got fifty games after review today. Yeah. Pass, 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 fail. Pass, 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 fail. Like just he's flipping a coin. The... I assume that's how the app store. I was works. Gonna, I was I was gonna make that joke. <laughs> yeah, there's one guy, one guy, <laughs> one guy. Yeah, just he's got a he's got a like a twenty sided die. Yeah, because <laughs> he's getting him approved because he's playing D and D. That's where I was going with that. Never mind. Um. So Sony's been really they're open as far as like anybody can develop for the, for the PlayStation 4 and I but you still haven't I still haven't seen that flood of I, I honestly when I bought my PlayStation 4 last year I thought there'd be a flood of indie games to keep me busy in between the big releases but that hasn't happened either um, are but, people are is that a lack of developers making stuff for the PlayStation I'm not sure what's going on cuz I've got a PlayStation 3 and every now and again um, I'll jump into the store and it's and all I see are the uh, um, like headlining games or like really old PlayStation Two games that are, you know, on sale for yeah. twenty dollars. That's it. I don't, I don't really see any indie stuff. And if it's indie stuff, it's the really, it's really popular indie yeah. stuff. Oh um, yeah, the the non indie stuff. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The millions of dollars indie stuff. Yeah. No, I just, I just, I, I don't know that's, what the solution that's is. Money. I don't know what the solution is to like prevent your baby maker extreme games from showing up on your platforms, but. I don't know. Closing the gate, like putting up these artificial walls, doesn't seem like the right route. And I don't know. I just when I when I saw like it's yes, it's good that more indie developers are going to be on Xbox One, but um, the fact that Microsoft was like promoting it as this like goodwill type of thing, I was like, you're 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 still yeah. missing the point. And it was just kind of disappointing and I, to see. And I'm going to take a wild guess and say that those um, indie developers that they brought into the fold are all handpicked. Like yeah, well-known, famous yeah. yes. indie developers that have already proven. It's like, hey, the behemoth, you know, the guys that made yeah. exclusive games for the 360 for us. They're 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 now approved. I'm like, you know, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Just from the there's the random games I've been picking up lately. Like that kind of stuff isn't going to be popping up on the consoles. And um, well, luckily you belong to the PC gaming master race. <laughs> so. 
But it's I not. It's not really a big deal for you and for me. But so I, I don't want, go I want, Xbox. I, don't know. I, I get a kick out of when I see <laughs> when I see those indie games succeed on the on the consoles. Like yeah, definitely. Just, so I mean, I I've done that too because when you sent me that, I thought it. I thought it was kind of ridiculous, and then I, I read a little bit about it. Because one of the things they're doing is um, they're making um, Unity tools, mm-hmm. so that at some point soon there'll be a Unity plugin for uh, Xbox One or, or Xbox yes, Live. Or, yes. But, yeah. So that's awesome. And then um, and then I got excited, and then I had to read it again, and then I got not excited. Uh, so all of those um, handpicked developers get a pro license of Unity free with the plugin. Well, yeah. I, I thought that was a little bit more inclusive. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not just uh, you can't just sign up and you, you get Unity. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So, and then it, and then I was like, oh well, that's not really a big deal. How much is Unity? Well, Unity Pro is about fifteen hundred dollars, mm-hmm. and the Xbox plugin is going to probably be fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> so if you want to make games on uh, on Xbox, yeah, live, it'll yeah. it'll yeah, it'll start at at about three thousand. As a you know, as a developer, it's like whoo. Yeah, that's... for for one guy who yeah who doesn't really know if he's gonna you know has doesn't have any ambition to do this for a living like wow like three thousand dollars that's a lot of money just to make a stupid silly little game yeah. um, that has easy that has easy mode <laughs> no normal that's normal mode that's normal mode <laughs> normal mode that's super easy friendly hugs and kittens mode I want to uh, uh, the last thing I want to talk about is the uh, some of these little random game discoveries we've made. Uh, we both sent each other the uh, trailer for Crawl. Um, I sent it to you, and then you immediately replied with, "Dude, you should check this out." Like to the not, and it wasn't to another email that I'd sent. It was to the email that I sent the link to you, and then you just sent me a different, vid- the same video, just a different, different place the video was hosted. Yeah. I was so confused. I thought I don't I actually read emails. Maybe it's a, I just maybe checked it's them off as unread. Maybe it's a different video, so I watched it again. I don't know. <laughs> it no, takes you 90 is, seconds of that video to realize. This is, no, this, this, is, this is exactly the same video, and the link I sent you was better because it was the developer's blog. <laughs> you sent me a YouTube. Yeah, you sent me the YouTube page. Man, that pixel art. Like the game. The game sounds really cool, but man, all these all these little indie games. I don't even care about the games. I just love looking at the pixel art. Like uh. Hyperdrive Light Drifter, yep. Dri- Hyper yep. Light. Oh man, that it's, Kickstarter page just has nothing but just these little GIF animations. God. It, I just uh, open that thing. I open that thing up, and just just stare at them. They're beautiful. There was one of the one of the sites had a, uh, um, yeah, an animated GIF of the dude just slashing a beast and blood going everywhere, and I just I I was using that to promote the game to friends. But so this is a dungeon crawler, and the the hook here, other than that, it's. It's a dungeon crawler. It's a dungeon crawler. You are okay, a hero in a dungeon fighting monsters. But the monsters are controlled by your friends. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, on top of like the fantastic st- art style it has, and um, the animation looked great, the gameplay looked great. So this was, I think this was just approved on Greenlight. I had a Greenlight link, so I think it's coming out to... Um, I know it's on Greenlight, but it'll yeah, it'll it'll get the votes, yeah. no doubt about it. Like the game looks awesome. Real, real simple pixel artwork but um like really complicated gra- uh, animations like it's it's not just a guy swinging a sword it's a guy swinging a sword and then doing a different backswing then doing a different forwards there's like every weapon attack like the spear attacks club attacks each of them has like probably like a six to ten little c- attack combo mm. whole thing's animated out and they just have gif animations on the website of each one man they're it's, oh, they're it's pretty slick, or, slick yeah they're slick yeah and then um uh, crawl you, is the name of that yes, game, crawl. by the way. And then you crawl. S- you sent me a link to, or I'm going to say it, call it Urkala, A I R K L L A. That's how I would say it. And, which I kind of made the joke um, because it looks like a, uh, I guess it's like a Metroidvania, but you're with mechs. Like uh, yeah. But there's an animated GIF of the guy, the pixel art guy. Prick, the just, lady. Oh, excuse me. The it's pixel lady. art lady. There you go. The main character is a lady. Spoilers. So there you go. Um, Empowerment. But she was jumping into a mech, and I was like, "Oh man, Titanfall has really changed since the uh, the beta <laughs> came out. They made a dramatic shift here." So I like the new I like the new pixel art direction. The game looks really indie now. I like it. <laughs> That's how Microsoft is. That's how they're doing the indie thing. They're just taking all their major releases and then just making 
making pixel art mm-hmm. versions of them. Eh. It looks we got like, you. We caught you, Microsoft. The, the prospect of a, a mech Metroidvania, Metroidvania with a, I don't know, the, the art style of this is uh, equally awesome as well. They had some, yeah. like it's just, yeah. it's this. Again, just real simple, real simple pixel art. But man, just a, it's just but lots of lots of frames of the animations and just lots of l- polish of the the yeah, character tons, animations. Yeah, tons tons of little detail. Like I set one as my uh, desktop right now, and it's just the it's just the main character like sitting in her kitchen, I guess. <laughs> but like imagine a uh, like a a really overly decorated kitchen on like a starship. Just tons, just ton, like you don't have space for everything, so you have to make everything as compact and square and pack everything together. Like any. Any place there's space, and it's just this little, you know, little piece of uh, pixel art. Man, it's gorgeous. There's a, all the all the tiny little bits of detail. Like, man, I couldn't do that. No, it's uh, no. My my uh, nephew couldn't do it either. <laughs> of course not. He's hey, what? He has no talent whatsoever. Um, man, just out there. The next, I am breaking all of your all of your recording stuff tonight. Your camera is <laughs> smashed. Oh. I should never lend you. I should. I forgot. Don't. I'm, I'm not. Even, I'm not even using any of it. Don't lend someone uh, expensive electronic equipment when you're going to insult his family. Of, make fun of their family. Um, My brother, you can make fun of. Okay. Just. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Trucker Balls has been. He's been pretty, pretty, a pretty good guy in chat. So. <laughs> I mean, other than, you know, we distracted Aaron and chat with all of our baby maker talk. So. Um, Man, that kind of so, lost the crowd a little bit. So first time for me being on uh, you know this side of the Twitch stream, it is really hard to talk and pay attention to what's going on in chat at yeah. the same time. Now you understand wow. how hard my my non job is. Yeah, I'm gonna start typing in all caps and use a lot of exclamation points. So, um, so you guys will see it. We'll get out here with our games of the week. Uh, what have you been playing? What's had your attention? Oh. The Witcher Two, man. So. I have never had really any interest in playing a Witcher game. I've, I've watched in, like the beginning playthrough of the first Witcher, mm-hmm. um, but I don't know, just something about it. It seemed really, again, really difficult and really cheat. complicated. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. And I couldn't figure out how to cheat and do an easy mode. So <laughs> I, was, I, I was never all gonna, the folders and I was never going to play the, I wasn't going to play the game. I was looking for the I and I files to change like your player health, and but I couldn't find them. So um, I just got done with Skyrim because it was on you know Steam sale for five dollars short. You put like yeah. 200 hours into it. Game of the year, 2011, 2012, 2013, and 2014, <laughs> Skyrim. Um, man, that game is so so much. It's so good. It's so much fun. Even so though it is, is literally what is the, the leap same from thing. Skyrim to Witcher like. Um. Yeah. So once I I I finally finished everything. I did my good th- playthrough. Then I did my evil mm. thieves guild assassins guild playthrough. And then that's it. I've done everything in the game. And so I was kind of like, man, I. I need something with swords and magic and oh. and, mon- and monsters in it. Well, that's what? so. The Witcher Two was on sale like on Steam a week or week and a half, two weeks ago, and it was only five bucks. I was like, oh man, that game's got swords, that game's got magic, and it's got two monsters. Swords. So I went. To, of course, everybody's got the Steam story. I, I go to buy it, and Steam's like, uh, you already own it. Do you want to gift it? To yeah. <laughs> when did I buy The Witcher Two? I've at no point in my life have I ever wanted to play The Witcher 2. I assume, again, there was just a Steam sale, and I was like, oh, all right, five bucks. Yeah. And just, <laughs> you know, just going down a list of, like, games, oh, five bucks, all right. Yeah. Oh, three bucks, all right. So I, I kind of wish the game would tell you how much... I think you've said this before. I wish the game would tell you how much you, you paid for it. <laughs> like, like, oh, I by the way... Want, I just want Steam already, to, to you, or, let me order my games by my purchase date, because I... I yeah, I would like to know the order that I'm buying these things because yeah, who knows? You might have had that game for like two years. Who knew? <laughs> uh-huh. You probably bought it not last holiday sale, but the holiday sale before because this is a couple years yeah. old too. I think it came. So I think so it came out the same year as Skyrim, if I'm thinking right. Man, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't have any idea when it came out. Actually, I didn't even think to look. Anyway, how's um, Geralt treating you? Uh, Geralt. 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 Gar- Man, that game. Gary. So there's a huge learning Gary curve. Witcher. <laughs> To go from um, a game like Skyrim to like a, uh, I guess you would call it a European RPG, like The Witcher, man. So you can't heal yourself during combat. You have to prepare for battles. So, so it actually it was a lot. Of, it was cool going from um, Skyrim because um, by about my second playthrough, you know, a good 60, 80 hours into Skyrim, you kind of realize like it is literally the same thing over and over again. 
someone someone's got a job for you and they want you to go kill this bandit so you go into a cave and it's the same cave it's the same cave asset over and over and over again and you just go in the cave and you kill all the bandits um you know the progression is like Spoilers. while you're yeah yeah oh that's the game and that's the end of the game it's a cave that it's you've seen before it's fun to play and a, and oh, well, those people think it's good you know the thing that keeps kit me playing the game though was like um the um progression of it like I want to level up because I, I, you know, I want to get those. I want to max out my archer uh, skill tree because mm-hmm. uh, you know I want to do the, I want to slow down time or I want to do uh, paralyze. I want to do headshots. I want to feel, feel yeah. all. I want to feel like Robin Hood, you know. Um, and then the armor, like man, just being able to like find new armor in the game, like that that point where you get the um, all the bone armor. <laughs> Like that is, that is that is a moment like that you have been dreaming to achieve, or all the Daedric armor. Like once you realize that that stuff is in the game, like man, hey, then it's hey. a goal. You know, then it's a goal to get. Oh, sorry, spoilers. No, I'm but just trying to just talk about The Witcher. I thought we were here to talk about The Witcher, not Skyrim. Oh, sorry. Like I said, <laughs> like I said, it's just the same thing over and yeah, over. Yeah. See, this is a problem. Being my first show, I've got about 30 years of video game we'll, to talk we'll, about here. So we'll get so, you back on. Okay, so sorry. So I switched this, uh, The Witcher because, again, just I was like, man, I, I want more medieval swords and monsters and stuff like that. But, yeah, whew, that game, um, okay, you can't – it's not open world. It's chapter one. It's mm-hmm. prologue, mm-hmm. chapter one. When chapter one's over, that's it. If you if you didn't complete all the side quests, then you failed them. <laughs> so now you're on to, chap, you're on to chapter two. Mm-hmm. Um and there's a lot of just like running around the same area, like talking to NPCs. Like a lot of the side missions are are like in every town you go to to arm wrestle everyone. <laughs> that's fun. Oh, is that that's a repeated thing? Oh. I did my I did my yeah. First it's in that. it's in every town. Yeah, and they actually link together. So once you beat the guy in the first town, he'll tell you, "Hey, go check this guy out in the second town." I, I did the I uh, never, like I the, the Fight out. Club thing. I like I, mm-hmm. I yeah, those are like punch some town. dudes too, but. How far did you get? Did you beat it? No, no. I'm in I'm in chapter one in the first like I guess I'm about to fight the Kraken or something like okay. that. So I'm right before that. The K the K Ram. Okay, okay. It's not, a, it's not a Kraken, it's a K Ram. Yeah. Oh, right um, now I know there's some beast out there I have to go kill. So Yeah, but like one of my favorite things about that game is um so you get these like little side missions that you'll get off of like job board, like a bounty hunter's job board. And it'll be like, oh, there are all these uh necrophages you know, eating people, and you got to go kill them. Well, the game actually tells you before you go kill them, you need to learn about them. So you need to go buy a book. <laughs> so now, you know, you have to find the NPC that sells books, and then you have to buy the book on that because that guy's got a ton of books, and there are a ton of different creatures, and you don't have a lot of money in the game. So if you just start buying books, no, you need to buy that book on necrophages, and it's a specific kind of necrophage. Huh. So once you buy the book, then the quest objective is updated. Yeah. And then you need to read. Then you need to actually read the little paragraph too, because now you learn you're not just going and killing them. The things they burrow into nests, and so you have to. You can't kill them. You have to destroy the nest, and you can only destroy the nest with a specific type of bomb that you need to go buy the diagram from, oh, so that you can so that you can build those. So bombs. yeah, I haven't or, really played The Witcher well, two yet. <laughs> that, but that's because cool. um, but that's cool. Skyrim. Skyrim did that too. Every time you entered a town, every town had like this really awesome, unique side mission mm-hmm. for the town. Like, um, Wilhelm had the, um, serial killer. Mm-hmm. Like, you walk in a time and you find the, uh, the people are all staring at the body that's been murdered, and now you're a private, now you're Skyrim, private detective, and you're trying oh. to figure out, you're trying to detect who the serial killer is in the town killing women. But that's it. It's the only time you do it, and then every other mission is go to this yeah. cave and clear out all the draggers or, or the zombie things and kill all the bandits. But, Witcher, it, but they're all side missions. Like you don't have to do it. Mm. Like even the K ran. Like it's not like you got to go no, buy. No, you got to do it. I'm playing that. I got a I got a sword on my back, that is just to kill monsters. So I gotta I gotta go kill some. Man, that's the lore. Yeah, it's deep. Which is really really Are you gonna read cool. The books? Are you gonna read the books? Well, again, so this is the Game of Thrones thing where um, some of them are not in English yet. Right. And I don't. The the author is a uh, Polish. Mm-hmm. It sounds like they're tra- they're all over the place. Like they're in every language, but they're not. All of them aren't in English yet. There's a like a couple of books, a We're collections of short short stories, and I think um, the two games that we've played, I think there are books in English based off of them. Oh, so like the, ne- you get the the next game coming out. Hopefully it'll. Man, I'm man, I'm excited about it too because yeah. like 
it looks the next like it's, it's trying to be Skyrim is the thing. So Oh yeah, I think yeah, I watched a video there uh this one's supposed to be more open world yep. too. So man, like kind of like that. Yeah, that would be real cool. But um, the cool thing about this next one, The Wild Hunt is uh so I, I've never played the first one, so I started playing the second one and uh, Geralt keeps talking about someone named Yennefer, and he keeps yeah. talking about the Wild Hunt. It's an ongoing thing. Like you can find um, old poems and stories, and you're asking everybody you meet about the Wild Hunt. And so I'm like, okay, I didn't play the first game. Clearly, I missed something. No, there's nothing in the first game about Yennefer or the Wild Hunt. <laughs> it's it's just lore. It's part of like Geralt's story. Yeah. So it was kind. Of, it was just kind of a funny moment because I thought like, well, I never finished the first game. I watched like the first chapter of it, so I must have missed a lot of stuff. No, you didn't. The first game, I, the first game, he's talking. There are people talking about Yennefer in the Wild Hunt, but it has nothing to do with the first game. So looks, the, I think the so yeah, it looks, just looks like the they haven't together. nailed down a date for Witcher Three yet. Saying next quarter, so it'll probably. I'm gonna go ahead and guess August. Well, I won't play it for another three or four years anyway. <laughs> when it's five bucks on Steam, because that game's only worth five dollars. No, that that which I two is, that. is 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 as amazing as they say. So I never said any of these games. I just hey, I'm playing. I'm doing other stuff at the time, and I just happen to be paying attention to Steam when there's an awesome sale. Nah, you you got a you, you got a I, winner there. I think that I'm a, I'm at this point now. If another Skyrim, an, another actual Skyrim game came out, I would just buy it day one for sure. Don't get, Witcher. Well, don't, <laughs> gonna, don't be distracted do by the Elder Scrolls Online, apparently. We talked a little bit about that with Josh the other day. It did not go well. So, so it uh, sounds like a it just sounds like a multi massive multiplayer and whatever it's called. It's a massive it's an it's, MMO that pretends that it's Skyrim. And it's Yeah, I heard so. I heard some guys I heard a, on another podcast, they were kind of like the games the game's trying to find the balance between that, but it's, it's not awkward. going to. Yeah. And so for Skyrim fans, eh. It's going to fall flat, and for MM more, I don't know how to say that, it's going to fall flat, too. Um, Sad to hear. My game of the week seems appropriate that I've been, uh, naturally, when Lords of Shadow 2 comes out, I need to play the one before that. Should I have asked you what your game of the week (laughs) was since you you asked me? This is how you drive the show as a host. (laughs) You just keep keep talking loudly over everything around your guest. Okay. Um, So I started, I wanted to play Lords of Shadow 2, but I got to play through... uh, Castlevania, Lords of Shadow, Mirror of Fate first, because I didn't stick through it on the 3DS. Uh, played a good chunk of it last week. Um, I've been playing the HD version on the 360, um, which is really funny to see the random 3DS moments that it throws at you that you you know, like, this thing's supposed to be coming at me, and it, you, it so you, Yeah, your, your, tw- your Twitch stream, like, I was getting just a terrible stuttering, but um, every now and again, your audio would come back in. I remember you saying that, and I don't, I didn't, what what was happening? It's like there's there's a bunch of scenes with the bosses where, for whatever reason, you both end up like falling off a cliff or taking a tumble, and it'll just do this <laughs> shot where you know you're falling at the yeah. screen or they're yeah. off in the distance, and you just know it's playing up the 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 three D on the three DS. So did they? Oh, three D. Yeah. Oh, was that? Did you the just, whip keep kind of just passing yeah, real close exactly. to the camera? Oh, it's in three D. It's gonna get you. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna get you. Um, holy shit! The story of this game is fantastic. Like I, <laughs> I, I totally eat up yeah. all Castlevania things, and I really got into the story of Lords of Shadow One. And this, I am yeah. so glad I went back to play this game. As I was kind of doubting, I was like, you know, maybe I should just do the Wikipedia YouTube thing and get onto Lords yeah. of Shadow Two. I was like, but holy, like just they finally. So this game's all about like filling in the rest of the Belmont story. You start playing as Simon, and you find out like. How he's connected to Dracula and so uh, is that gonna is that is the game the so you're playing the Mirror hold on, hold on. of Fates? So I will the, I will say at this point because of the trailers for Lord of Shadow two spoilers are on the table right now. We are going I'm going to talk through the awesome revelations in Mirror of Fate. So yeah, just so you know. The, okay, if you can. I was gonna say the, the the first Lord of Shadow games. I think we're I think we're past the the expiration yeah. date on spoilers. So it uh it actually starts off you play the prologue is you play as Gabriel from Lords of Shadow One for a little bit, and um he um he has a son, and um then you come to fu- then the game starts with you playing as Gabriel's son's son, which is Simon Belmont. This is that's the original Castlevania hero. 
So, so Rogue Legacy. Yes, it's exactly like Rogue Legacy. They're can all tied together. State? Can you save state? Yeah, save luckily, state. yes. I didn't have to. Because I, I want to play as Dracula. I don't want to know the sun. I, want I just wish it had permadeath. Actually, oh, actually, this game thankfully has like a checkpoint system during boss battles. So it uh, it's been beating the hell out of me. But um, it, they look like really long boss battles. I couldn't tell if you just were playing them really badly or if they were just really long. They were. They're. Tr- I mean, it's it's really. It would. It, the audio it, would come back in, and you'd be like, yeah, you'd be like, damn it. <laughs> the controls. That was a cheap. That was a cheap shot. Damn it. The controls. I gotta do are, that over again. The controls are fair. It's a very much more deliberately paced action game, uh, like Lords of Shadow, where everything's very combo based, and the characters are very floaty. So when any time it takes you, it tries to get you to do like timing based jumps or any platforming. It that's where it kind of falls apart. But I push through that stuff. Um, the the castle design's been really great. I'm surprised at how how the map comes together. Like they, you know, Dracula's castle is is pretty awesome. But the hook here is the storyline and just figuring out how, you know, how Simon is is connected to his father and what that means for Dracula. And I just got through a bunch of those revelations there at the end, and I'm about to start the third act, which is where a twist happens. And I'm just I, I can't wait to finish that game. And um, uh, Dracula is not really your daddy. <laughs> but we have the DNA test results to show you who is. Back after the break. <laughs> wonder how, uh, wonder how vampire no? DNA works that way. No. No. Did you? So did you actually catch how it was all connected during all your stuttering? <laughs> no. Do you, do you want to? No. Know? Yes, I do. Okay. I was confused because you, you kept saying something about a family reunion. Oh, yeah. Because it, it was Dracula, Alucard, and which Belmont was it? So the funny thing is I didn't – I thought it was so it was so obvious from playing that much of the game, like how everything was connected. And then um, the twist happens, and uh, apparently it wasn't obvious. Um, that So you play as Gabriel Bel- Belmont in uh, Lords of Shadow 1. He becomes Dracula. At the end, of the <gasps> so he has. A son. I don't remember that happening. He has a son. That doesn't, that doesn't sound right. He has Check a son that is protected by the Brotherhood that turn, basically the Brotherhood which, that turned their back on Gabriel. That which he didn't know about. By the end of the first game, he had no idea he had a son. No, no, that was all new with Mirror of Fate. Like they, the prologue is a year before Lords of Shadow yeah. One takes place. So he has a son who is Simon Belmont's dad, who you start playing as, and he's trying to go figure out what happened. Simon went to Dracula's castle and never came back, and now I'm an adult. I'm going to go figure out what happened to my dad. And then they start interweaving um, Alucard into the story. Like, he's he's in the background helping you, and you don't really see it. And then you have a comfort... Simon and Alucard have a competition. Like, who are you? Why are you helping me? Then you play as Alucard for Act 2. That's really cool. And then... um. You know, about halfway through that, I, I start connecting the dots. It's, kind of a, so, you it's know, kind of a Symphony of the Night throwback. Well, yeah, I mean, the whole Lords of Shadow thing has just been a new take on Castlevania. But, you know, traditionally, Alucard is Dracula's son. Yeah, so, yeah everybody knows that. So, Gabriel... Even people, even people don't know anything about Castlevania. They, they know that. So, I, yeah. you know, like, I'm playing as Alucard, and I start th- I, for the first time, start thinking, so Gabriel Belmont is Dracula. Gabriel Belmont had a son... So Dracula's son would be. We, we've already established father yeah. son. Yeah. We know there's this other guy in the castle. This. And then Alucard is supposed dad. to be Dracula's son. Wait, does that mean Alucard's Simon's dad? And then, so that was kind of the. Like, uh, uh, so like they they <laughs> so did this you whole. They, you mean they hid it from you? Like they were going to reveal it? And you were going to no, be no, real no, surprised? Like, they, like I thought they were telling the story really, really well. Yeah. Because you do this whole battle where you're. You're Alucard. You're fighting with Simon. And you're fighting uh, Dracula, and like it kind of ends. And I'm like, okay, they haven't come out and say that Alucard is That's where Simon's dad, but like he, all the information's here, so it's obvious, right? And then yeah. they start Act Three, and you're playing as Trevor Belmont, who is Simon's dad. And I'm like, so wait, you're gonna make me play another act to fill in the blank that I already know that Al- Trevor Belmont becomes Alucard? Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, so, that's. That's, oh, so he knows he knows his dad as Trevor, and the but game, it, yeah, like I, game, I connected game all those dots, and I was talking about it on the stream. But the game, game hasn't connected that no, dot. and, it's, that and I've got to play. Was Alucard. Yeah, and I've got to play through another act to do that. So, it's do a, they do they look the same? Does Al, see Trevor wears glasses? Alucard doesn't. <laughs> no, they that's have, where they get. That's where they get you. Trevor has dark hair. Alucard has white hair. 
can't be the same person. No, you no. can't just go from dark, especially when your hair is that long. You know how long it would take to bleach your hair? <laughs> So I, I don't, because I have short hair. I have no idea. I assume a long time. You know, so Lords of Shadow 2, which is out now, you play as Dracula. I don't really know how it's, where this story's going from here. It's going to fill in that gap of who Alucard He's is. looking for his dad. I get, yeah. <laughs> and then it turns out he's his own dad. Time travel, time travel stuff. It's, it's all Yeah, they're gonna, it's going to get real. It's why the second game's in the future. Yeah. And then time travel. Lords of Shadow 3 is actually True Blood, the video game. <laughs> That's how it all works, so... I think uh, it's just it's just a soap opera in the woods, out yeah. in the cap cabins in the woods with a bunch of vampires being all moody. Cause my dad, my dad left me when I was a little kid. He didn't care about me. Now I'm a bad dad. Now I'm gonna be a bad deadbeat dad too. <laughs> but I'm also a vampire. I don't think they're gonna so, get to make that game. So that's on the table too. <laughs> I think um, you yeah. got an old uh, cart out in your out in your yard without any wheels on it. <laughs> White trash vampires. <laughs> I don't like where this is headed anymore. It was, it was really cool for a while. <laughs> Bring me Patrick Stewart back. He was in the first game. So, all right, that's gonna do it for top video game podcast this week. Jordan, the best what? top video game podcast. No, of that's the that's way too long. That acronym's weird. Just yeah, it's a weird. I had to drop okay. the of the week too. So, um, okay. Well, I still have plenty to talk about, so I'm gonna sit here and. <laughs> I'm gonna keep. All right, we'll catch. Just, we might invite you back. Stay, I don't know. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna stay on the on the hangout here and just keep talking to myself. <laughs> Daring um, myself, my. So sorry, top, man. Go, it's, go ahead. Go ahead and finish the show. I can't. This guy won't stop talking. <laughs> uh, awkward first guess, I tell you. Um, but yeah, top video game podcast will be back again in two weeks. Uh, we'll see you then. Um, until next time. Woo! Good job, Jordan. Good, Good show, everybody. Yeah. Good show.